Ah, it burns, it burns. <laughs> Good evening, everyone. Yeah, I'm sitting out here walking home in the sun. Hoping to God I don't become a puddle at the end of it, but hey-ho, that's not why you called. No, what I want to talk about is this Muslim vote group who have issued a series of demands to Keir Starmer to win their votes back. And you know what? I think I'll start off by stating the bloody obvious here, other than the fact I've got a few double chins here. Anyway, this is about mentioning that no one's vote is more powerful than anybody else's. So, I'm, my vote is not any more powerful than any one of the subscribers I have. Likewise, their votes are no more powerful than a load of Christian votes, or a load of Hindu no, uh, votes, or a load of Buddhist votes. So this statement in and of itself is very hollow. And quite frankly, if they were making demands, the first thing I'd be doing with them is throwing them in the bloody bin. And maybe with a few bacon sandwiches as well. Anyway, I would be dismissing their, their demands because they have no right to be making demands. You know what they say? We don't negotiate with terrorists. And effectively, what they're doing is they're basically showing support for Palestine. Because their demands culminate into three main points. One, stop supplying Israel with weapons and support a ceasefire. Two, recognize that Palestine, well actually no, I've already mentioned the third point, but two is basically support a ceasefire. And three is that the he needs to recognize that there's a Palestine state. So let's go through these. Let's get rid of the easiest one first. There is no such thing as a Palestine state. It is Sharia law. Let's just call it what it is. The Sharia law that is supported by Al Jazeera and of course Hamas, who are a prescribed terrorist group. So any claims whatsoever that there is this Palestine state that they think they're entitled to needs to be dismissed as quickly as a fart in the wind. The second point is that Israel has every right to exterminate the Hamas terrorists. They have every right to do that. In fact, they're probably encouraged to do it, if anything. The only thing they're not really allowed to do is kill unarmed civilians and kill innocent women and children. However, as we all know, especially anybody who's seen the American Sniper film, is that Islam knows damn well that we would hesitate to shoot women and children, which is why sometimes the fanatics of Islam use them against ordinary soldiers, because they know full well that it will trigger that psychological response Basically, they don't want to kill them because who would want to be accused of killing an innocent child or an innocent woman? And then it turns out they're holding a grenade or they've got a hidden gun and they go ahead and shoot some soldiers dead or what have you. But of course, the mainstream media won't tell you that because say it with me, folks, it doesn't suit the narrative. They don't want to put out there what Islam likes to do the death cult of the 5th century, living in the 21st. That's what they do. They basically use psychological and guerrilla warfare to try and attack people. That is no secret. Therefore, it would be very, very difficult to actually say for 100% certainty, hither or whether, whether they're Islamic soldiers, fighting for Islam, using psychological warfare, or if they really are innocent women and children. And for the third scenario, I want you to picture this in your head, because this is a scenario that I'm going to create. Me and a McDonald's, what's the chances? Anyway, <laughs> in all seriousness, here's the scenario I want to present to you. 
Let's say we're in World War II. Let's say Adolf Hitler's gone off and invaded Poland, as he did in World War II. Okay, following? Now, let's say we're coming into 1944. The Germans are starting to lose a lot of ground and they're starting to lose the war. And all of a sudden, Adolf Hitler comes out and says, we want a ceasefire because we're losing. <laughs> Ludicrous, isn't it? But that's basically what it boils down to. Could you imagine the Allied forces who face the greatest threat in their existence? Nazi Germany. And Adolf Hitler comes out and says, we want a ceasefire. No, you're not getting a ceasefire because you've made a, a little key wucky No chance. Because at the end of the day, Hitler would have to pay for his war crimes. And what it also comes down to is that Hamas and these Palestine people who support this Palestine stuff, they're terrorists. And they have actively called for the genocide of Jews. Speaking of Jews, anybody recall uh, a day or two ago when some Palestinian supporters decided to hold a protest, <laughs> of all places, outside Auschwitz? You know, the famous death camp for Jews? Yeah, that one. They decided to hold a protest outside that camp. Now, I don't know about you, but they couldn't be any more insensitive, even if they had the insensitivity mob come along and start proclaiming their feelings for LGBTQ, and then the Palestinians went, when, well, we're going to stone homosexuals to death or throw them off buildings. That's what it comes down to. The Palestinians and Hamas are calling for a ceasefire. And this is not the first time they've done it, by the way. But they're calling for it basically because they're losing. Now, I don't know about you. Oh, and also one more thing on the side note. What do you think chanting from the river to the sea, Palestine will be free, would imply? To me, that sounds like they want to kill the Jews. Now far be it for me to get involved in Zionism and all that stuff. I don't really care about the Jews, generally speaking. But I do believe they have every right to at least live on this planet as a human being or beings. So when I hear Palestine, basically calling for the support, uh, sorry, for the death of Jews and genocide of Jews, I have a big problem with that. So you can't just go out of your way to say, we want the genocide of Jews, we want to kill babies and children and behead them and what have you, and we want to take over and we want to have a caliphate here in Gaza and what have you, and then say, oh, things aren't going our way, can we have a ceasefire? No, you can't, because that's not how it works. You'd call for a ceasefire if there were legitimate concerns that could put innocent people in danger. You Palestinian bastards and Hamas have actively been looking for the genocide of Jews and have killed innocent people. Therefore, I believe you are under no obligation to have a ceasefire. In fact, the only thing I think you are entitled to, if you're a supporter of Hamas, is a bullet to the head. And even then I'd question it, because I think it would be a waste of bullets. At the end of the day, these people are calling for a ceasefire they are not entitled to, and are only doing it because they're losing. And as I said, I would implore you to imagine if Adolf Hitler did that. He would be laughed to oblivion and back and probably be given two first class tickets to hell as well. Anyway, he would be laughed out of existence because there's no way people would support that. 
because he is obviously one of the biggest war criminals. Palestine and Hamas are the biggest supporters of genocide of Jews and do not support the wishes of other people. And frankly, if these people care so much about Palestine, why don't you go over there? Why don't you go over to Gaza and show them your support in person? Or is it because it's war-torn and you don't want to die out there, hmm? Is that why you want to push your beliefs onto us? But to, I guess, do a TLDR version, anybody who's seen the video about the Muslim pupil who basically wanted the school to bend the rules to her, this is exactly the kind of thing I'm talking about right now. Where we don't have to bend to Islam. We are the main people in our own damn country. Our country, our rules. And if Islam doesn't like it, then they can head on to the next dinghy or plane back to whatever shithole they came from. Hell, even if they were born here, I would probably say, ship them off. Because, frankly, if they hate our country so much, or hate Jews so much, why should we have genuine racists here? Hmm? But that's something, of course, the mainstream media will not want to tell you. That is something that the Palestinians will not be able to defend because it is indefensible. You cannot justify the extinction of an entire religion. You cannot justify the extinction of an entire sect of people just because you don't like them. That's what it boils down to. So directly messaging Keir Starmer right now, do not bend the knee to Islam. They have no right to be making any demands of you. This Muslim vote group needs to be basically disbanded with immediate effect because they are basically trying to terrorize and I guess in a sense blackmail Keir Starmer. Because that's what it is. They're blackmailing him by essentially causing him to lose votes. Causing him to not be as popular in the polls. Just because he doesn't want to support a ceasefire that they don't deserve. Just because he wants to provide weapons, potentially, to Israel, who have every right to defend themselves. And, as said, he should not be bending to anyone. In fact, Islam should be bending to us because it's our country and our damn rules and as I said if they don't like it then quite frankly why don't they go over to Gaza and show the su same support for them they do here over there because if they're going to be genuinely racist and want genocide we don't want the Muslim voting group here.